Hi and Assalamualaikum, I am Madam Shakirin and in this last video of a photosynthesis, we are going to look at and understand what is photorespiration and how photorespiration reduces the productivity of photosynthesis and how plants that live in hot area adapt to this hot environment and, to, and how the plant overcome uh, the effects of photorespiration. Okay, so let's proceed. So the last subtopic of photosynthesis that we are going to look at in this video is 6.2.4 which is C3, C4 and CAM plants. The learning objective of this subtopic is, to, is for you to be able to describe carbon fixation in C3 plants, carbon fixation in C4 plants and also carbon fixation that occurs in uh, CAM plants. Okay, photorespiration. So on hot and dry days, plants will close the stomata, which uh, this is to conserve water within the plant. Okay, so uh, this is also to reduce transpiration, which is the evaporative loss of water from leaf. But by closing the stomata, this will prevent carbon dioxide from entering into the leaf and then a carbon cycle which is supposed to produce sugar cannot occur. So this therefore limits photosynthesis and reduces photosynthetic yield. So uh, closing the stomata will reduce access to carbon dioxide. So it means that when the stomata is closed, carbon dioxide cannot enter into the leaf. So therefore carbon dioxide concentration begins to decrease within the leaf and as for oxygen oxygen concentration within the leaf will increase because oxygen as you know is the byproduct of light reaction so oxygen concentration in the leaf will increase and uh, when oxygen concentration increase uh, in the leaf oxygen will bind to rubisco so later we will look at we are going to look at what is the effects of rubisco binding to oxygen Okay, so this condition favors a seemingly wasteful process which is called as photorespiration. In this diagram, it shows you a cross section of plant leaves during hot uh, temperature or hot conditions. As you can see from the diagram, the stomata that opens will cause the leaf to lose water okay, through transpiration. So in order to prevent uh, the loss of water through transpiration, the stomata of the leaf will closed but once the stomata is closed as you can see from the diagram carbon dioxide cannot enter into the leaf okay and oxygen cannot exit the leaf okay through the stomata because now the, the stomata is closed so oxygen concentration in the leaf will increase because as you know oxygen is the product of light reaction okay so it says here under hot arid conditions leaf lose water by evaporation through openings in the leaf which is the stomata so the stomata closed uh, to conserve water but as the result oxygen builds inside the leaf builds up inside the leaf and uh, carbon dioxide cannot enter the leaf c3 plants and photosynthesis Okay, so most plants are C3 plants, okay? So examples of C3 plants are soybeans, potatoes, rice, wheat, and also oats. So for this plant, their initial carbon fixation occurs via the normal Kelvin cycle, which is uh, the, the carbon dioxide will enter into the Kelvin cycle, and then the carbon dioxide will be uh, incorporated uh, into RUBP which is function as the carbon dioxide receptor and the reaction will be catalyzed by the enzyme Rubisco and then uh, the product will produce the phosphoglycerate which is a three carbon sugar. Uh, when these plants are exposed to hot temperature photorespiration will occur. Photorespiration will cause the stomata of the leaf to close and once the uh, stomata is closed, carbon dioxide cannot enter into the leaf and causes the concentration of carbon dioxide to decrease. So therefore, there will be low concentration of carbon dioxide in the leaf of the plant. So, uh, uh, when carbon dioxide concentration is low uh, due to the closing of the stomata, 
oxygen will accumulate inside the leaf of the plant. Oxygen, as you know, it is the byproduct of light reaction. Uh, as light reaction occurs, the oxygen will be released and causes the concentration of oxygen to increase inside the leaf. Uh, inside the leaf here now, okay, you will have low concentration of carbon dioxide and a high concentration of oxygen in the in the leaf. So because there is a high concentration of oxygen in the leaf, Rubisco, the enzyme, will prefer to bind to oxygen. It prefers to bind to oxygen compared to carbon dioxide. The product that will be produced okay, will split into a two carbon compound, which is we call it as glycolate. So this glycolate compound will leave the chloroplast okay and then it uh, it will be oxidized in the proxisome and then metabolized in the mitochondria and produces carbon dioxide okay to summarize on photorespiration if you look at the term photorespiration so for the photo part so it implies that the process occurs during daylight okay so the process requires light energy and then uh, for the respiration part, so photorespiration, it requires oxygen. Okay, as uh, we have looked before, Rubisco will bind to oxygen. And then it also consumes organic fuel. Okay, as uh, we have looked at the previous slide, it produces glycolate. Okay, glycolate will be metabolized in the mitochondria to produce carbon dioxide and also water. Photorespiration is a wasteful process because it does not produce any ATP and it does not produce sugar. Okay, so uh, this will reduce photosynthesis efficiency because the process will not be able to produce sugar because there is a low concentration of carbon dioxide in the leaf and carbon dioxide cannot bind to rubisco and uh, the carbon cycle cannot occur. So therefore, it produces less uh, sugar. Okay. So to overcome photorespiration, flowering plants have evolved two different mechanisms to avoid the wasteful photorespiration. So the first pathway or mechanism, uh, the plant, uh, some plants have evolved a C4 pathway and some plants will evolve crassulation acid metabolism pathway.